yo, why do they hate Bronny so much? I don't get it. I mean, I kind of understand where the hate is coming from, but why do y'all hate this man so much? Why does, like, Skip want him to lose? Like, I, I came across this title today by Undisputed, which we're going to be reviewing. Bronny is so bad, he's not ready for the NBA. You understand? Like, Skip on Lakers rookie and lost the heat. Like, it's he could have jitters. He could have anything. I mean, is it the fact that his dad was so great we comparing him to that? Because think of uh, think of some of LeBron's teammates he had a win with. Think of back in the day, Kobe, who he had to play with sometimes. You know, and these people used to be horrible. You'd be like, how did these people get into the league? How did they get into the league? Why are they in the league? They cannot play with these type of people. You know, with the, with the most elite NBA players. And for two, he had that health scare where, you know, they said his heart stopped beating or something like that like that plays a role too the fact that he even got back out there and still at it like that probably changed a lot in his so once he overcome that fully and who knows how, how long it actually takes to overcome that but let's jump right into this man because I got a couple things on my mind about this because I'm tired of seeing it I'm tired of it let's look at this shit man hold on the Lakers, the Lakers summer league, league team blew a late eight point lead last, last night to the heat, heat. As the, As the Lakers, Lakers first and second, second round draft picks, picks did not, not exactly flash potential in the fourth that. quarter. So what y'all gonna say about that dude who just got his shit took right there? Y'all see that? What y'all what, what you, can you say about this? Shit? Come on. The, the Lakers, Lakers summer, league summer league team blew a late eight point lead last night. One steal. Night to the heat. As the, the Lakers, Lakers first and second round draft another picks steal. did not exactly flash potential in another the fourth steal. quarter. Another steal. Three steals right there. Three steals. Dalton Connect three went blocks. 0 for 4 in the last four three minutes, while Bronny James did not take a shot in eight fourth quarter minutes. And for that matter, why they only got Bron him with two steals? That motherfucker. That's he didn't take a <laughs> shot in 16 second half minutes and wound up with just three total points. So, Paul Pierce, what mm -hmm. did you see? What did I see from the Lakers draft picks? I saw Connect show me some promise. Yeah, you know, I like what I saw, his aggressiveness. You know, it yeah. is Summer League, so Skip, I played in Summer League. I've watched Summer League for a lot of years. I really don't put too much stock in it, but if you're asking me what I see, I see a kid in Connect who could be serviceable. And yeah. when I watched Ronnie, you know, he obviously displayed uh, some great intensity, I think, on the defensive end. Obviously, he needs to have more confidence in his offense. Uh, I don't it. think he was aggressive enough. Uh, I don't think he looked to take his shots. But... He has to still kind of wonder, you know, what his niche is going to be in this league. And to me, I think he could be that 3 and D guy, you know, but he has to show me a little more aggressiveness. He played 29 minutes, you know, got three shots up. I need him to be a little more aggressive. And I know it's summer league and, you know, he's the type of player that, you know, maybe needs someone to create offense for him. You, you know, you know, he has at times. That's my point. I believe that he will all, I think Bronny will absolutely be somebody who, like I said, it's people in the NBA who do a little cut and a little screen and play defense, sit in that corner and just shoot the three. And that's their moneymaker. All they got to do is sit and wait for somebody else to drive into that lane, kick it out, and shoot a wide-open shot, and boom. And play defense and be able to understand the function of the basketball court. That's where it comes in, um, like, uh, basketball IQ. Like, he has basketball IQ. He's his father, son. He, all he did was watch him, you know, being in there. He understands the game of basketball. It's a lot of people out there that don't understand. Look, there's a lot of people out there that don't understand basketball IQ. They're just athletic. They're dumb. Like, you're a dumb player. Like, you're type of niggas that can dribble, dunk, do that, dribble into a defense, two people double teaming them, get the ball turned over. And it's like, bro, use your head. Like, what are you doing? Like, uh, uh, just basketball IQ when it comes to uh, stopping a defense, understanding exactly what they're trying to do. And it could be a three-on-one and being able to stop it. Like, my father, he was a great shooter. Everybody know him as, oh, ice, he could shoot, he could shoot, blah, 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 not dunk. They said he could dunk, but he was never known as the biggest dunker. He would finger roll it on you, fall back, jump over you, shoot. He was a great shooter. They called him the Iceman in my city, right? But me, when I started playing, I realized I was a defensive type of guy. I wasn't the best shooter because I didn't have that confidence like my dad had. I was somebody who would, they would, I was, my senior year, they put me, I was, I was a three. Uh, could have damn near been a two, but I was guarding the fives because I was one of the tallest players and one of the damn near strongest on my team. So, I had to sacrifice myself, and that became that let me become an amazing defender. So even when I go to LA Fitness and uh, Lifetime, and I'm over there playing basketball and doing open gyms, listen, I guard the best player, and as long as I can stop him from scoring, yo, we pretty much win the game. Like I don't look, I I have a more a, a higher winning record than I do just in recreational games than losing because. I understand defense is how you win on these, especially these pickup games. If, if they best player don't score, 
you pretty much, and this is another thing I would do. I would let somebody else guard the best player and always just babysit and watch him in. I know he's going to drive, and I'll be right there every time to disrupt the defense. That is an essential pl- – that's, that's, that's gold, especially in the NBA. If you're a disruptor on defense, they think they can just dribble past you, just throw a ball over here, and you tipping it up and giving the, your team the opportunity to get that turnover and – you know, on the offensive, setting the right screens, getting the cuts, getting the easy buckets, that's sometimes better than being a showstopper, being somebody that one-on-one, one verse three can do all this, Kyrie doing all, take it up. Listen, you seen what the uh, Celtics did with a bunch of fundamental people who understand cut, screen, pass, don't sit in one spot for too long, you know, um, be a di- defensive disruptor. Like, you can't have it all. Uh, you can't You can't have Luka just coming. You're not going to win with just Luka shooting, even if he made every shot. You're still not going to win the basketball game like that. So I feel like we got to lay low off of Bronny a little bit. Let that man get comfortable. Y'all been on his ass. Y'all been on Bronny's ass since USC, since did like, as soon as LeBron said he want to play with Bronny, y'all was like, no, we don't want that to happen. I mean, LeBron gets a lot of hate. Like, come on, bro. He damn near 40 doing what some of y'all can't even do in y'all's 30s. You understand? You can't even run up and down the court. Y'all drunk. Y'all drugged out. Y'all peeled out. Y'all perked out. Nigga, knock it off. Y'all nigga, man, chill out. Chill out on this. Like, bro, y'all mad because y'all can't get y'all son a job at wherever y'all work. You feel me? Like, nah, let, let, let this man, let this man breathe, man. Let him, let's see what he can do. Because once he scored 20, what y'all going to say? If Bronny go out there, debut game, score 20, 30 points, what the hell are y'all going to say? Y'all damn sure ain't going to say sorry. Y'all know y'all not, can't accept uh, res, ex, uh, accountability, apologize for being wrong. We already know how y'all feel about it. Like, y'all not ready for this. To create offense for himself, but if he wants to establish his niche and wants to be a guy that gets minutes in an NBA game, he has, he has to show confidence, confidence in his offense, and he got to knock down shots. Mm-hmm. That, that's, that's what I see. What I you know, see. being a defensive guy is all good and all, but this NBA is, is, is a make or miss league. Mm-hmm. You're going to hear this all the time. And if you can't make shots, it's going to be tough for you to play, play, especially at the guard slot. Mm-hmm. So you play 29 minutes, Kip, right? Just a lot of minutes. Whether it's regular season, summer league, yeah. pickup game, whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. Prior to that game, he didn't play in the previous game because he had a knee issue. But he played this game, he played 29 minutes. So the good thing is, you let this knee grow. Let Brian, let this knee grow. <laughs> Doesn't seem like anything's wrong with the So that's the good thing. That's the, that's the, that's the good thing. Yep. The other good thing is defensively, when you look at well, we've, what's the comp? What's the comp on a 6'1 guard at 19 years old? You got a little bit of a Drew Holiday, maybe. Who's 6'4? Who's 6'4? But you have like Mike Conley. No, but Mike Conley can shoot. See, that's a little bit of difference. But then, you know, scrappy guy, a Patrick Beverly that can score a lot of points, but every now and then he'll take a shot or two. You can live with that. He's 19. Defensively, though, well, this, this is some league. league. He did show flashes of yeah. stuff on the defensive yeah. end. Coming yeah. in was the one thing that everybody kept saying, oh, he's going to be a defensive guy. He's going to be a scorer. He's going to be a defensive guy. Defensive guy. Defensive guy. Defensive guy. Well, he kind of showed that. He got five defensive rebounds. He had three, uh, two steals, three blocks. I mean, that's all on the defensive statistical like category. Yep. Yeah. Offensively, he shot it nine times in the first game, and I think he made one. Mm-hmm. So, so, two, two for nine. So, two for nine. Mm-hmm. So, he probably sat back and said, okay, when they talked to him, they said, hey, man, focus in on your strength. Your strength right now for us mm-hmm. is the defensive side of the ball. We'll get to the offensive side. Again, I go back and I say, let me just talk about I want to see him once with the big Because see, ain't nothing going to build a, somebody's confidence in the NBA if you guarding other NBA defenders and they not able to score on you. You blocking their shots, you taking the ball from them, you doing a – that's where that builds your confidence. Even if you getting a couple of layup, back screen, get a little couple here and there, you got to grow if you're not a naturally score. You got to know, like, okay – I'm able to play with these dogs. They can't score on me. I'm taking the ball. I'm blocking a shot. I'm getting assists. I can play with them. And then once he gets that fundamental of confidence, he'll be able to grow. And, you know, it's going to just get better. I got faith in uh, Bronny. I think he can do it. I, I just, just want to see the big dog. Yep. That's, That's all. I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't. I don't know, know what this is. is. This, this is pick up basketball to me. Mm-hmm. That's, That's what, what it is. is. Mm-hmm. I want because everybody trying to get a shot off. Everybody, everybody trying to show. The, the Europeans, Europeans, hey, man, I can play, come, come sign me. Or the NBA guys, hey, I can play in your G League because if I can't play for the Lakers, I can play for you. And so it's all that jockeying for position going on right now. When you get with the big dogs, there's a pecking order, and it's already set up. And when you slide him in there, let's see what that is. Cog who can blend in with the big dogs. And he knows how to play. He won't get in the way. He will facilitate. And I still say, if he's playing with the big dogs at the crypt, and you give him a wide open three, he'll make that three. He, he, he looks, looks out of place, place and out of sync in this because it's all 
solo madness. You know, it's, it's all, it looks like the McDonald's all-star game when everybody's just trying to go solo and show out. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Watch this. So I see the flashes. I, I see, you guys know Davion Mitchell, the kid yeah, for Sacramento. So he's out of that mold. He's more 6'2"-ish, strong, physical. And Ronnie's got a chance as he sort of grows up and into his body. He, he can be that. I don't see the quickest feet, but I see him guard with strength and smarts. And it works because he knows how to do it. He knows that he gets to the right place mostly at the right time. But the problem is... <laughs> His, his father, father is, is the, the single, single greatest, greatest scorer in the history of the National Basketball Association, well. and yeah. I can't change the kid's name. He got named after the father, and it, that's it. He is LeBron James Jr., and so you can't help yourself because you're watching him. You say, well, wait a minute. He just played the whole second half. He played 16 minutes in the second half, and he did not take a shot, and his father is that, and you would think, be a little chip off the block. At least in the first game, he put up nine shots, and we liked it, you know, because he was shooting it like he meant it, okay? I, then last night, he takes three told shots, and he makes a layup, okay? So he made one layup, and in the first game, he made a layup, and then he made one jumper. So in two games, and I know it's still ridiculously early, small sample size, but in two games, he's made one jump shot, period, end of story. So he's three for 12. He's not made a three-point shot. He's 0 for 4 from three, and from the free throw line. So I guess my question is, in this second, in this second game, did he purposely try not to shoot as much? Uh, to the point where he might have had a, a chance to take a shot and he's just not shooting, that would be like, okay, bro. Like, nah, if you're open, shoot the ball. I don't want you to be like, oh, I only made one for six, so I ain't going to shoot the next. Nah, nah. If you open, try to score. Don't just look for the assist and try to work on the other stuff, you know? Like he's got one for four, which starts to make you think like father, oh, like son. Well, well come on. Well, you, he, 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 he has to shoot 90%. To, to make it in this league at six, one and a half, doing what, he's not even a point. You know, he, he's an off-ball player. You, you have to make just about every time you go to the free throw line, you just have to make them because yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's, and, 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 yeah. and he, maybe he will. I hope this so. Yeah. Two games no, in his I, professional basketball career, we're talking about because he missed yeah. the second game. Yeah. So, you know, look, you, you, you can't erase the last name, right? Mm -hmm. You can't do you it. You just can't. But his father was a, it was, to me, still is decent when he wants to, but he was a defensive player too. Absolutely. So he's not at the highest level. So when he's, got, he was, ooh, he's got a little right? bit of that trait. Yeah. When you talk about, uh, Gary Payton and Gary Payton Jr. the third. <laughs> yeah, I think it's yeah, that. Yeah, that's another one. Yeah, that's so, that's so when you yeah. look at that, GP can score. Any glove was a glove. So you think the Lakers had a hole in it. But other than that, all right, let's see what we got here. Let's see, maybe USC. Let's see what we can find out here. 2023 highlights. Let's see what we what we dealing with. Maya knows how quality care can bring out a smile. Corey passes not taken away. Corey should look opposite wing on that one. You see him. He blocking like a cat. You see that defense. We've seen LeBron James chase down a play. There you go. Wow. His dad usually does it off a one leg. That was off a two for Ronnie, but same idea. Yeah, bro can jump. You feel me? He can jump. Dallas gets the screen. Went to go down to Uchuku. Finds Brody. His pass. His pass. Perry over the window. Shelf dead is superb. Brody James with the steal. And hit for Isaiah Collier. And Collier is fouled. We'll get to the line. He's another player that is very skilled. Can shoot it. Understands the game. Can see the play. Make plays. And has the ability to finish with the best of them. Count it in one. Set. Guys that can see plays defensively and offensively. Now he's got the handles. Now he's got the skill set to finish with the athletic move at the hoop. So a very skilled, talented basketball player at both ends of the floor. Trying to dance around Bronny James. Down to three. On the contact, no call. Here we go. Bronny for liftoff. Like father, like son. Bronny James reaches for the stock. And he proved that last year. And look at his defense. He stays down. He doesn't even put a shot face. That was not a foul. And then the big time finish at the other end of the floor. So not only did he defend, but he had a little showtime finish as well, too. Boogie Ellis with 18 points for USC. Bronny James Mike Jr. from deep knocks it down. They don't play well when the ball sticks, but they've really been sharing the rock. Corey with a jam. Yeah, he can find the screen. He can find the open man. He can get through. They're not taking the ball from him. They're not bullying. they not, you know what I mean? It's not like he can't hang with these guys. Nah, y'all just expect greatness from him because of the name. Collier takes it away. There's the decision. Bronny with Bronny. Did put it right on the money for Bronny to go up and get it. This is how yeah, I mean, he's finishing out of you. He's got the green offense. He's got the lead back. Look at him. He's about to hit his head on the rim. 14 points for Kobe. Short block for Bronny. What a five. Good pass. Bronny lays it in and give the assist to Bronny James. What you say? He's earned the right to kind of take those shots, though, to get himself back into that mode. You know, do you know how many people in the – listen, do you know how many people in the NBA score seven, six points and still being effective in um, – 
in the team's success, you know what I mean, be a major part of the team's success, and it's not because of points. It's because of rebounds. It's because of steals. It's because of assists. It's because of screens. It's because knowing where, you know what I mean, being a disruptor. We got to, um, I say all the all the Bronny hate is a little unnecessary, man. It's a little unnecessary because, that, like I said, if it wasn't for LeBron, y'all wouldn't be comparing him um, as tough, as hard as everybody, you know, comparing him. Because y'all not even worried about nobody else on there. Somebody else scored three points, get the same stat. Y'all don't even talk about him. Y'all just still looking at Bronny like, Bronny, what are you going to do? Bronny, what are you going to do? So I'm going a, I'm to a, um, say, Bronny, uh, give, him, give him some time. He... He might surprise y'all. He I'm might, he he might be somebody. Um, he James. might be exactly what the Lakers need. Like, you know what I mean? Somebody to get out there and get some defensive stops right. with Austin Reeves. Come on, think about all these people, man. Think about people who from year one to year two. Look at uh, Antetokounmpo, Giannis, who got stronger, got smarter, got bigger, got more confident and all that. And as the years progressed, KD, a super uh, uh, Sonics. He, no, the Super Sonics he played for. Then he went to the Thunder. Then y'all start hearing more about KD. You see, and now you... He's the, like, so just give it some time, I say. Even though he gave up that one season, here's James with three. Got it, Ronnie James, having a terrific first half, maybe the best half he's had offensively of the season. He'll beat the team that I think is top five good in Arizona. Uh, the injury happened 11 days ago against Stanford, is Arizona State, and then West Virginia in between. There's a catch it again for Ronnie James. Once the defense kind of sets up. Johnson, who created contact at two points. That may be during the break, but Bronny James getting in the lane. A nice drop-off pass, and look at the body control. 17 for Arizona State. They're going to make it to school. And coming up this week for Thursday in Eugene as he would super finish. Pounds just a couple of days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He ain't um he ain't nothing to be um just slept on. Obviously, he's a college player, man. And um to make it even to that, uh even to that level is a success. You know, to be able to play D1 college under you know and still be out there like come on bro they're driving on it he's jumping up as high and blocking a shot throwing it out of bounds like knock it off imagine having a your heart stopping or something being rushed and then coming back in there and not nothing like come on and and overcome that then you got the the public wanting you not to be as good as you they they don't even think you as good so you got you playing with a chip on your shoulder and you always trying to and you're, you're going out there like it took me a long time to understand like let me just play my game and and no matter what happens, I'm going to do the best that I can. And that's all you can do. Uh, and not be thinking about why you on that court. Oh, is this person looking at me? What that coach? Because I remember playing basketball and the coach, every mistake I made, I'd look over at the coach to see like, all right, am I good? And see his face reaction, all that. See if he's going to try to take me out because I made a mistake or something. Like, I didn't like playing like that. Uh at being able to know that I'm going to stay in even if I make a mistake allow me to play at such a higher level and be like, okay, I made a mistake. Let me get back and not looking over like, oh, am I all right? Am I all right? Can I uh, – like, what What you want me to do? What you say, coach? Because you, you need to be coachable, but at the same time, you need to be able to not be so playing in fear and – in fear of making a mistake because that allows you to not be risky. You're like, all right, let me do what coach think I should do. No, you got to do what you think you should do and what you know you should do. And the coach just putting you in there, he got to trust that you can do what you do and lead the team, even as a senior, you know. So you can't always be – listening or looking for what the coach is doing and what the coach is trying to say. Sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. And, you know, he just got to deal with it. That's just what it is like. And I think that's what's going to happen. You know, hopefully he don't look at his dad and say, like, dad, am I good? Or this, dad, like that. Nah. LeBron going to tell Brian, yeah, you got a green light. Go out there and do your best. You make a mistake, make up for it. That's it. Keep going. Don't stop. Don't get in your head about this. Don't worry about these people. You've been in a spotlight your whole life. Start getting used to it because these people are here Everybody out here is trying to show you that you're not supposed to be here. And at the same time, you got to have that matching with that energy and say, yo, I'm supposed to be here and I got to prove that. So once he gets that dog, that fight to where he gets mad and stop looking, so like he needs to get pissed. Did y'all see his reaction uh, when he got highlighted? You know what I mean? A reaction to getting drafted. Did y'all see this? Like it looked like bro was just like, you know what I mean? He was just like. You know, he knew kind of what it was and what everybody's going to say even when he got drafted. Let's watch it. He's drafted to the Lakers with pick 55, making him and his father LeBron the first father-son duo in NBA history. And rather than going into the studio where the draft was held, he was surrounded by family and friends. And here's his emotional reaction to getting drafted. With the 55th pick in the 2024 NBA draft, the Los Angeles Lakers select Ronnie James. Cameraman already knew it. See, I feel like everybody knew it. The camera's already told to him, you know, and he's just sitting there like, 
I can't be like, oh, surprised or none of that. Nah, he already know, you know, and he got to take it in and be like, all right, this that journey, you know. I feel like he's excited, but not as excited as he could be. Let me show y'all my bad. Um, not excited as he could be, but watch how the camera turns. In the 2024 NBA draft, the Los Angeles Lakers select Ronnie James. See, before it, they already knew it. Look, here's your hat. Here's your thing. A paper towel, unless you want to cry or something. That boy looked like his dad, for real. <laughs> he looked just like his dad. Ronnie James. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I feel like anybody else, they be getting up. Let's go. You know what I mean? Like, But, hey, it's um, I get it, man. I get it. So, shout out, Bronny James. Best of luck. And we're going to revisit this Bronny James. It's just remember this. This is part one. I'm just reacting to this because I'm like, yo, why? These headlines, y'all people are getting... Out of y'all's body, y'all jumping to conclusions, y'all saying he not good enough, like, come on. Anybody saying he ain't good enough, if you can beat him one-on-one, -on -one, I'll shut up. But if you don't think you can beat him one-on-one, -on -one, why are you talking? Why are you talking? The man's 19 in the NBA. Come on, bro. Now, I tell you, when I was 17, my game versus 17 versus my game when I'm 25, 28 was way different. I was way more aggressive, way more smarter. I, you know, I figured things out. He's still early, man. Y'all give him some time. I'm telling y'all, give him some time. You'll be surprised because I've noticed some people that are great in college and great at uh, pickup or great at this, they get into the NBA and they're not so great. Why? Because it's a system of, it's a system how, you know, it's, it's plays being ran. It's a, it's a whole, it's millions of dollars, it's, you know, billions on the line. Like, yo, a championship, this is a system. And if you can run in the system and be successful in the system, you are going to be a good basketball player. You you're not going to just be a great one-on-one -on -one player and you're going to be the best. No, you got to be a great team player. The team got to be able to work around you if they see fit. Like, so just watch. Just give it time. Let it nurture. Let it cook. Let it simmer. Just watch what happened. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Just watch.